Well, expect the unexpected to come up. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna bring up some angles on here that, well, they're different angles. So you're probably not gonna hear too much, especially from the alternative media. You know, it's pretty much a joke that uh, what they talk about that um, you know Russia's gonna be able to topple the United States by dumping the dollar. That's a big joke and a half. But they do have a major propaganda media outlet out there called Rush Today that, you know, puts their stuff out against the West. But let me just get on with some of this stuff. First off, I'm going to point to you about uh, China. China, you know, recently HSBC, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, they put out that the PMI, the primary manufacturing index, was 48 and a half, right? So they're down. It's bad. It's really bad. They got contraction going on. They got plenty of mills out there and machinery that are sitting at about 20% of production. And China's biggest customer is out there is uh, where they export to is the European Union. So how the hell are they going to do good, right? So, I mean, it's all interconnected for one. But uh, let me put it to you this way also. There's something else that just came up that um, I think it was either China's largest developer or one of their largest developers is basically bankrupt. They got arrested uh, by the authorities because uh, they owe like hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of loans or whatever the hell it is. It's a ridiculous amount of money. And it's probably foreshadowing more problems that have been, you know, it's, these problems have been showing up in the shadow banking system during the big construction boom in China. Uh, you've seen the big construction boom in China with uh, you know, they built like Paris in China, they built uh, Disneyland in China, they built all these empty cities, the ghost cities, and uh, the banking industry in China is in probably in way bigger shambles than you think. So, you know, the alternative media likes to freaking tell you all this stuff that uh, things are bad in the United States, they're actually worse in other places. It's global, man, it's all over the place, probably going to lead to more problems. Now, I'm going to tell you something else here. This is where I think, well, I heard this story and um, put my take on it because actually, you know, it was saying that they were putting it as a bad thing against the West, but I think it's a good thing, to tell you the truth. Um, it looks like the situation in Ukraine is um, being employed in such a way that's a lot shrewder than people on the surface think, you know. First off, I want to um, address this little uh, phrase about Putin's backyard. You know, Ukraine is their backyard. If you look at Russia, Russia has the biggest expanse of territory of any nation in this, on this earth. They got nine time, time zones. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> they got troops stationed on the eastern side of Ukraine, and they're not just going for Crimea. They're just going, it looks like they're going to be doing more. Uh, they don't need more land. That's the last country in the world that needs more land. They got land up to yin yang, and they don't have. They have a population that's going backwards due to the economic policies of the elite in Russia. Their population is decreasing, and the only place it's being held up where it's not decreasing too fast is in the Muslim sector, not even the Christian sector. The traditional white Christian uh, Russian is going backwards due to the. Uh, freaking elitists that run roughshod over them, so, you know, I don't know what they need more land for, they got so much land, they don't know what to do with it, but what's going to come out about this is this, there's going to probably, it looks like there's going to try, to, they're going to do an invasion of the eastern Ukraine, besides the Crimea, and if they do that, what could happen is, all of Russia's navy could get bottled up in the Black Sea, because it would be pretty easy to do. Just like the Ukrainians are bottled up in that area, they bottle them up by sinking ships, they could easily bottle up the Russian Navy over there too. Now, if there's a major fighting war between the 20,000 troops in Ukraine and the 80-something or 100,000 troops that are on uh, the, their border, uh, what would happen is, what may happen is, the United States may strike Iran uh, and uh, Syria together with Israel fighting against them while Russia's busy with that. You know, that could happen. Right? And Russia will be too busy over there, they're not going to do a damn thing. They're going to be stretched too thin. 
So, you know, maybe the guys in the West aren't so stupid. You know, I don't like Obama too much, but you got to remember, we don't have a dictatorship in the United States, despite what the alternative media tells you. Um, the military is one thing. The intelligence sector is another thing. And the civilian sector is something else. You know, they're not all melded into one under one man where you got the KGB intelligence head, you know, making the laws of the land and saying this is how it's going to be. Uh, you know, I want this. Everybody agree. And they'll say, yes, <laughs> it's not like that. I know Obama would like it that way, but um, he's not the guy that's running the shot. He's calling the shots in his country, to tell you the truth. And what will happen, you know, we got to remember the first blood moon is coming up in April 15th. I think it's April 15th this year. It's coming up. That might be coinciding with what's going to happen. And uh, the last times we had the four blood moons, there was uh, victories for Israel. Now, people don't like Israel. I know that. But there's, there's going to be victories for Israel. And uh, this is actually going to probably put a big hurt on the Russian economy, too. Now, there's other things going on because what might happen is that if the Russians feel like they're being too threatened, and Iran also has nuclear weapons already, I know they do. I mean, if you have to be an idiot to not to freaking know that one, <laughs> they've had them for years. Um, they got ships outside the United States, and they can use the EMP weapon against the United States off of something. Maybe off the coast of Florida, man. Who the hell knows? You know, I don't know. We'll find out. But, um, uh, you know, if there's, they're pushed right to the back, they go, you know, they go hell, hell, they go all the way. They go all the way. They don't hold back. They don't pull any punches. It's like war is, you fucking do it or that's it. You know, there's nothing you can do about it, right? So, he's, there's, what I'm saying is when this happens, it may turn into something bad happening in the United States, too. But what is that going to do to the price of gold and oil and uh, silver? Way up way up. That's what I've been thinking is going on. But you know, it looks like the Ukraine and Syria and Iran is all linked. It's all linked. If there's a major fighting war in Ukraine, and see, right now it's looking like Russia's going to try to tell Ukraine what to do. <laughs> you know, it ain't his backyard. It's another country, you know. I guess there should have been a fourth option on that referendum. I should point this out. Because I said the referendum only uh, pointed out they wanted to go independent on the Crimea, which would have been, they would have been screwed anyway. You want to be independent with all the Russian tanks in your country with eight, you know, thousands of troops all over the place with blockades? You want to be independent? That ain't a choice. Or do you want to join us with all the freaking tanks? Uh, yeah. Now, the third choice would have been status quo, which a lot of people said, oh, let's go into the European Union. And I don't like the European Union either. I think the European Union screwed up. How about a fourth choice? Uh, we go with the Ukraine and keep the status quo as long as the Ukraine does not join the European Union. And if they join the European Union, then we have another referendum to find out if we want to be part of the Ukraine or we want to go with Russia. That would have been number four choice on that referendum. And I bet you that would have been a winning choice. I bet you that would have been a winning choice. Because the Crimea does have quite a bit of influence. Uh, of uh, independence even when it was under the Ukraine. I think the big deal there was that the Ukraine was going to be part of the EU. And I don't like this EU stuff either. I think Ukraine ought to be independent. But what looks like it's coming up is that um, Vladimir Putin is going to expand his empire. He's a freaking neocon Russian style. Uh, he's an imperialist Russian style. And uh, he's going to push and, uh, you know, Go for it, man. And while he's busy over there, the U.S. and Israel will probably attack um, Iran and Syria and knock them out. They'll be done. And uh, don't think the U.S. military doesn't have the people and the resources to do the job. They do. They do. There's a lot of people that think the U.S. military sometimes is weak. You know, they don't see the other people's militaries, man. Um... Now, one military I think I have a lot of respect for was the Rock Marines, you know, the uh, Republic of Korea Marines. They're tough as nails. But 
I don't want to knock them because they're our allies, but they're not as smart as the American Marines, I don't think. <laughs> and I've seen enough things that make me think. I don't want to talk about that shit, but uh, they are tough. They are tough. But a lot of other militaries out there are, um, they're not that tough. And even the ones that are tough aren't that bright. And a lot of times it's knowing your shit that makes the difference. And Americans do know their shit. We got a very intelligent uh, force out there. And uh, they know how to improvise and how to do things on their own without being told. And, you know, this was the big problem that the Germans had against the American military. I'll just give you a story. Um, back in World War II. You know, if you killed a German officer, they were in a total disarray. They didn't know what the hell to do. If something happened to an American officer, the next guy in line just took in place, and they knew how to lead, and somebody else just took charge. Because everybody knew everybody else's job. And... It was like you couldn't really stop it. It was like, you know, it's like trying to cut the head off with a mafia, man. It was the mafia on wheels, man. That's what it was. Anyway, that's the American military. <laughs> um, Assad's going to be hit. In a minute, John, it's going to be hit. They're going to be taken out. They're going to be dead. And um, There'll be a new dictator in place, so, you know, for the alternative media want to cheer on the next dictator. Uh, hopefully, you know, the next dictator won't be as bad. But the alternative media, I know what they're going to do. They disgust me. They disgust me, to tell you the truth. Um, as far as what's going to happen with Vladimir Putin, he's going to be highly pissed off, and uh, he's a dangerous guy. I know that. I know he is. And uh, they, the Russians got a lot of weapons. They could do shit. I don't really know what's going to happen. It could lead to something else. It might. It might. I don't know. It might. Anyway, if it does, the price of silver is going to go way the hell up to $1,000 an ounce. And uh, it'll be radioactive at the same time. So that's the good news. Uh, that You'll get a lot of money for your silver if we go to World War III. So anyway, um, I just want to leave you with that thought. And uh, Alex Jones will be down there in his bunker. Uh, two miles underground, saying, stick with me, folks, listen to me, uh, I'll keep you safe, uh, you got your shortwave radio on, or I'll sell you some freaking MREs for, you know, 50 ounces of silver pop, you know what I mean, <laughs> anyway, um, let me just leave you with this thought, you remember that old uh, one from the doors, the West is the best, the West is the best, god damn it, you know, Actually, I should, you know, I should add lib on this. I think it was Jim Morrison's father was one of the guys that was the intelligence or something involved with uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, too. <laughs> so his kid turned into a druggy hippie. <laughs> anyway, over and out. So it looks like it's some interesting events are coming up that um, it looks like uh, when it, Ukraine it happens, it may be this way. The Russian Navy is going to get bottled up in Black Sea. The Russian Army is going to be tied down. And the U.S. and Israel is going to make its move on Syria and Iran. Good. Good. And then when uh, Syria, the Assad gets knocked out of Syria, Putin's going to be scared about one thing. Rebel uprisings of Sunni Muslims because they're going to be emboldened in his own country. But when you got a rat backing into a corner, he's going to be dangerous. Because Putin is a rat. Alright? He's a rat. I'm telling you that right now. The guy is a fake Christian. You know, he's a freaking KGB Christian killer. Okay? He's playing an act for his freaking game of being on the top. I'm just putting it out here straight as an arrow, man. No bullshit. And Obama... You know, if you feel like, I, I don't think Obama's like a tough guy here at all, but, you know, or Kerry, but, you know, you got to remember, we have a civilian area in our country, and we got a military area. We don't have the military running the country. The civilian area comes first. The military are tough. They know what they're doing. And they're shrewd. So, uh, you know, it may come out very good for the West, but uh, like the problem, like I said, might come about when the rat gets back in the corner 
Putin's going to be pissed. And, uh, you know, he'll probably hit the button, man, for all I know. Who the hell knows? But if that's the case, that's when you will get $1,000 for your silver. So we'll look on the bright side, besides the nuclear radioactive cloud that's up in the air. All right? Look on the bright side. Don't worry about it.